that with uh, uh, why he is giving the speech. And uh, then I note that um, the constitution uh, shows how this is a new country and uh, we, we discussed how they just uh, uh, overcame the, uh, like, they got, of the rule, got out of the rule of the British Empire. Like, they were, uh, and they were slave. Uh, okay, I've addressed slavery later, but. Uh, okay, so just, just in terms of what you've so far. So basically, you're making a, a connection between the purpose of the speech was to draw some type of immunity because of the historical context. Yeah. That they just come out of the, the kind the, of the British rule. Yeah. Um, so they, the colony. Yeah. yeah, so we discussed how uh, people would be, uh, they don't have an identity right now. Uh, yesterday, so I. I connected that with uh, I'm an African, which is like how the uh, the writers giving the people of the country an identity. Good, and the main and with that in, mind, in this case, it's, I think it's working well to show the interrelationship between the context and the purpose, um, and you're using textual evidence. And when you use this textual evidence, you name the first feature by saying that it's the use of the use of repetition. Um, what could have made that that point a little bit stronger after you given this example of repetition? If you're going to mention the stylistic feature as a way of backing up your point about context and purpose, then a sentence or so um, explaining why why those words are being repeated, how does that back up the purpose and context? Yeah. Yes, actually, sure. Yes. Okay. And then if we're talking about sounds used in words, yeah. why those sounds? So if you so think, to evoke emotion among the among the general population, because its assonance is generally used by that sound. Yeah. That's a general. So I'd like to point thing that it, that it creates an emotional reaction. How might those, how might those sounds make an emotional reaction? Now normally, I heard someone on the side of the room say, because it flows. Now normally that's a terrible point to make, but in this case, I think it's really a useful point. That didn't sound very supportive, did it? But, I, but see, often when people talking about poetry and sound, they say it flows and then they don't go anywhere with it. So that's why it can be a terrible point. But if you take it somewhere, then it can be very good. Why in this case would it be important to give a sense of, of, of flow? Does that link with Anika's point about evoking emotion? Just that you need to answer. The question is why? Hang on just a second. Tell me, you look like you want to answer that. Yeah, like, I just say, I, I look at my paper and it's just, if you, like, you can say the these and if you, like, if you say it, then I feel like you believe it. So then it's like accepting the ideology behind it. And it's come, like the fact that it comes with so much ease makes like a symbolic difference that, you know, like the fact that they can say it with so much ease, which is to make somebody to be proud of the things to the speech, which is to um, empower them and to make them feel that like they should just not be like they are after they can carry their entire back.
the right addresses, given the fact that the name, I don't have the, I was going to quote some lines from the text. Yes, and then we'll definitely WhatsApp quoting. Oh, because you can have your paper, yeah. we'll be able to do that. Um, given the fact that the native African was tortured and enslaved by the British, there's a feeling of shame and even fear among different ethnicities in South Africa. Is the writer is trying to ease those people while uh, also stirring hope among the people of the nation. During this decade, uh, there was a lot of immigration in South Africa from India and China, which increased the cultural diversity. Due to this uh, ethnic diversity, there's also uh, uh, there was a growing anxiety between natives and immigrants. That the writer wanted to count to, to reduce the racism by encouraging unity as well as cooperation through the various ethnic groups of South Africa. So uh, there was this, um, I, I don't know the exact point, but uh, he, he mentions freedom from India, China, something in the last year, yeah, the yeah. second last paragraph, so I was going to just write that and explain Okay, so, the, so one thing, just to bring it Yeah. 
describing in order to reflect your understanding of that. So you need to, in that, you need to show your understanding of an aspect of part two, language culture, or language of um, systematic, systematic communication, which might be either related to language bias or language persuasion. You're going to pick um, a sort of a sub a subtopic or a particular aspect of that that you want to show your understanding of that part of the course. You're also going to choose a text type that you think either that you know well or that you're interested in and you want to research. So it doesn't have to be a text type that we've covered in class. In fact, I would encourage you to choose a text type that we haven't covered so that you're exploring. It's, it's, it's another opportunity, like with the SOA, it's an opportunity for you to explore something that you're interested in and do some, um, some independent learning about it based on the learning you've done together. Okay? Um, so you're going to show us what you know about part two, and you're going to show us what you know about that text type. Um, and don't worry, there's lots more information coming. But they, they're looking for you to do something that's imaginative. It's not imaginative, in the, it's not really creative writing. It's not like writing a short story or something. But you are using your kind of intended approach to it. And you are um, trying to show your own kind of, um, yeah, you're trying to put, put some of yourself as the writer into it. Um, but notice it says it must show a critical engagement with an aspect of the text or a topic. Now, when we get on to studying for literary text next term, we'll also have a written and at that stage, you then might be responding to a particular text because we'll study some poetry or some prose writing, and you're then responding to a text. In this case, you're responding to a topic. And by topic, I mean language persuasion or language bias. Yeah? Um, and it says you have to complete at least three of them and then submit it for external assessment. Okay, you understand all that stuff. Um, so they tell us that a box really clearly that I'm only allowed to give you back on the first draft. Okay, um, so it gives an example. It gives an example here. Um, um, if we look at the second paragraph under the box, once students have decided on their area of study in a particular title, they're free to produce any text type that is appropriate to the task. For example, a written task discussing the representation of an aspect of gender from part one, or in part two, could be written as a newspaper editorial. Another example might be an imagined journal entry from a character in one of the novels lots of other examples later on. So you're putting yourself, basically, you're becoming the writer. What we've been doing so far this term is we've been looking at, we've been looking at text as a reader, and we've been thinking, um, I'm a reader, what is this writer doing to try to make an impact on me? Now you're switching gears, you're switching feet, however you call yourself, a metaphor. You're becoming the writer, and you have to decide, what is my topic that I want to get across? What is my topic that I want to use? Who is, what is my purpose audience and context? How am I going to get that across? But the thing you get across to your reader has to be something related to something you studied on part two. Yes? Yes. So you said where the author of stories, like in an analysis, we state the context of production and reflection explicitly. In the written task, it doesn't have to be explicit because it's. We're not analyzing that. So we are writing our own thing, so it doesn't have to be explicit. So yes, it doesn't need to be explicit. Yeah. So it can be also. But it won't be a context. Of course, there is. No, you're you not basing it off of your own. You put yourself in the, so suppose, uh, you would want to write something your character. You want some particular audience to be doing that. Like, suppose no, you're you are stating it. You would probably incorporate it if you have an attitude. In that way. I'm just giving the example that you have a content that I should have. Like, for this joke, like, for this one. Honest, for one, I don't know. Context of that kind of thing. Okay, I think we've got too many voices. I know um, you guys probably follow this better than I do, but so I mean, your point is that you're like whatever you do, there'll be a context of production. Oh, there's always be I mean, I'm not writing it. I, I didn't have a chance. You're only writing it, but it has to show that it affects your writing in some way. Okay. I guess. Yes. Yeah. That's what the rationale is for. Yes, and we're going to get off to the rationale that you already know something about earlier. So um, don't worry, we'll explain about that in a second. There are two parts to the written task. In part of the written task, you explain what you're intending to do. In the second part of the written task, you actually do it. So, so then, you have, like, we have to write a newspaper report or something like that. That would be one text type that you could write, yes. Okay. So it has to be something, uh, it can't be completely fictional. It has to be, like, the facts and all should have to come from some text source. Uh, it could be fictional. Yeah, it could be you can do absolutely any text type you like. Um, as well, and you want to, what you want to ask yourself is which text type is best is going to be the best vehicle for me to show my understanding of this part of the course. Um, so there, there are two.
two things you have to show your understanding of. You need to show your understanding of the six plan, and you need to show your understanding of that part of the course. So you want to make sure that the text type that you choose is the best um, opportunity for you to show your understanding of part two. And Baldwin, you were mentioning a point also. Um, okay. This Max, so I thought he's the only one. You guys know about that. that there is there is there is it's overall, um, and you don't, you don't want to think of the total. Okay, let's, let's go down the page a little bit because we're going on to the word length. So we're at the bottom of page 30 now. The task not included in the rationale. Must be 800. Must be 800 to 1,000 words in length. That means it cannot be under 800 words, um, and it cannot be over 1,000. If it's under 800, um, it's just not. It's not substantial enough. If it goes over 1,000, you lose marks. It actually says in the rubric, which we'll look at it a little, a little bit at a later stage. It actually says in the rubric. I think it's under organization that you can't get above a certain number of marks if you've gone over 1,000 words. If you go even one word over. And yes, the examiner will check because everything is marked online now, which means that all they have to do is do, is, is do um, and check your word count. So you need to be under a thousand words. The rationale, which is the part where you explain what you're intending to do, that cannot be more than two to three. That needs to be at least 200 words, if not more than 300 words. And again, you lose one mark for your rationale if you go over 300 words. So essentially, what you're going to do is you're going to decide what is my topic related to part two that I'm interested in. What is the text type that I'm going to use to express my understanding of that topic? Um, and then um, how am I going to go about in, um, deciding on how best to express that through the words that I choose? And just like any other writer of any other text that we've looked at together, you're going to consider your audience purpose and context. As, and, and that should be in your rationale. So that's kind of just getting you a bit of a flavor of things. There is also near the end, you can skip on to, there's lots of other information, but that's enough of the basics. On page 32, they do give some examples, but we're going to look at some examples together in a moment. So if you look at that section, examples of written tasks, these are possible examples of written tasks. They're intended for guidance only and are neither exhaustive nor compulsory. So they're just giving you a flavor of possibilities. Um, so we need to wake up a few other people in the room um, so you're not just hearing my boring voice. Michelle, would you read the first example for us? A newspaper article, <coughs> which, a newspaper article which has shown the danger of stereotyping in particular social groups. Okay. Now, would that have anything to do with part one, and domestic communication? Maybe that. Yeah. 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 It could relate to bias. Okay. And persuasion. Persuasion. Definitely yeah. manufacturing the defense or the author's opinion on the issue. It depends on what you're writing. Everything has persuasion. Yeah. I would say everything has persuasion, but you could. I mean, this is the I mean, so it's been so good you could work with me. You could. So, what you want to ask yourself when you're choosing your topic is what is my, what is, what I really want to show about my understanding of part two. If your purpose is that you want to show your understanding of persuasion and you want to make sure that the focus of your text is going to do persuasion. Okay, I'm just going to read the second one. Okay, uh, uh, how the task is intended? No. Yeah, the, how the task is intended to explore the one Oh, that's right. Oh, an additional episode that takes place before the beginning of the novel and provides context to the opening sequence. Okay, now that would only be relevant if. Yeah, yeah. because we haven't yet studied Okay. Part two? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, that could be biased. Mm -hmm. Just 
What do you mean? Wait, just one thing at a time. Would it be more likely to be persuaded or biased? Bias. Bias. Well, would an advertisement, how would an advertisement bring in bias? Well, oh, okay, you mean, yeah. you mean column might be expressed bias. Um, but if the, if the focus of the opinion column is about the persuasiveness of advertising. Okay, I guess there could be bias depending on the perspective of the writer of that, sure, because it's an opinion column, okay? And yeah, I think that that's the thing. This put yeah, right. If you're talking like about advertising, it would be more suited to for this. Oh, for that. So, but first, Mr. Persuasion and Bias. Don't talk over each other, guys. Persuasion and Bias bias. So Bias is like a subtopic within the situation. It it often is, but I can put this with this example. With this example, what you want to ask yourself. With this example, what you want to ask yourself is what's the main focus of what you you're trying to show about your understanding of part two. Probably more to do with persuasion, although and then any editorial column is going to have an element of bias in it. You're right. Yes. Yes. We're going to look at that in a moment. So. I want you to get that sense of you're using a technicite as a vehicle through which to show your understanding of the topic that you've covered. Right. So um, if we back up to page four, page thirty-one, how are our brains doing? Are we still okay with concentration? We've been doing a lot of listening. Okay. So if we look at the, the requirements of the rationale, so we said the rationale needs to be between two and six words. Um, so, it's the bullet points there that I'm interested in that um, maybe you were speaking at earlier. In the rationale, you, the ra what is the rationale? Why, okay, why did you choose what you choose? You're justifying your choice. Okay? Like focus. Yeah, you're thinking about what was your purpose, what were you trying to achieve? Something like a statement of intent, hard work of intent. Good, if you think about the statement of intent, it's that uh, those of you that have GCSE in the school last year, or when we get to statement of intent, it's a similar thing to rationale. Um, and that rationale is doing two things. If you're if you're justifying what you were trying to achieve, how is that helping you as a student? If you have to write that rationale and really explain and justify, this is why I've written it the way I've written it, how does that help you? It uh, allows the examiner to understand the student's context. It gives us direction. Okay. So, okay. It, it helps. It helps you guide you yourself. Yes. Okay. So you've got that clear focus for yourself as the writer. This is why I'm writing it in this way. This is what I'm trying to achieve. This is what I'm trying to show. And um, Kanish, how would that help the examiner, or how would that help you in getting marks from the examiner in your rationale? How would the yeah. rationale help you get marks? Okay. Let me phrase that differently. Why would the rationale be of use to the examiner? This it's a safe provide to be useful. Uh, it helps the examiner understand what the purpose of the like explicitly what the purpose and your audience and context is, rather than like inferring something from the text. You get an explicit uh, list of what your purpose, audience, context, and everything. Is. So it helps the examiner understand the text in a better way. Good. And if the examiner can understand the text in a better way and understand what you were trying to achieve, then why is that a good thing? So it's a way of yeah. holding the uh, examiner's context in reception. Huh. Good. Yes. So we're we're um we're preparing the examiner yeah. for what he does with it. Yes. So how's that going to help him get more marks? Just do yeah. the Sure that the examiner notices the things that you're trying to do. Yeah, so 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 we have to know. But so don't you know, 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 Such, that's such 
So there are so many theories that you could listen to. Yeah, so you need to be choosing. Um, you don't want to try to, to do too much. You've only got a thousand words for your task and 300 yeah, words for your rationale. I would say probably just one theory. And just to, um, you, want to, you want to be clear about what exactly the ideas you want to get across, and it may be just one of the theories that you study. So that's number one of what you need to get in your rationale. What else do we need to make sure we mention in our rationale? Then you go into the context of the all the context, yeah. the production, the subject, and audience. The five. Which five? Yeah. The big five. Yeah. One aspect of the big five. Unmet audience purpose. You want to make sure you mention those as well. You want to show that as a writer, I understand this part that in either part in part two that I have to be conscious of how a writer constructs the text. In relation to audience purpose context, so because I'm the writer, I'm considering audience purpose context. And you don't have to be writing as an 11th grade student. I know you are an 11th grade student because you are a writer, but you can put yourself in the place of someone else. You could be a South African writer. You could be um, you could be an Eskimo writer. You could be somebody living in the Appalachians in America. You could be an advertising executive. You can put yourself in the imaginary place of, of a writer. And, and that's part of your context extraction then. Um, that would be, no, let's put that as a um, theory. Yes. Would we, does it have to be like a uh, written thing, or could we use images as well? So suppose we want to do something like an advertisement or a poster. Yes. So maybe a propaganda poster or something. Can we do that? Because in that case, it definitely won't. Have 800 to 1,000 words. Um, yes and no. Yes, you definitely want you can draw on graphology if that's relevant to your chosen book okay. type, and you want to talk about that in your rationale about how you use graphology. But you can't do a, like a like just a poster. I wouldn't recommend that you do that because I think it would be difficult to meet the um, the expectation of the rubric just through graphological okay. features. Um, so I would I would encourage you. It does say I think it's a. So I think that leads too much. Too, uh, too subtle. No, yeah. it's too, too subtle. So, and one of the examples that we're going to look at, um, you've got 19 marks out of 20 from the Senate from the IB examiner. Um, he did use graphological features, but he's using them in relation to his 800,000 words that he wrote. Awesome. That's just a picture, not a thousand words. Uh, there's always that saying, isn't it? A picture of, what's the saying? A picture of. Picture of a thousand words. Yes. But in this case, no. <laughs> Okay. Miss? Um, context audience purpose, third thing. So I just have a question. Okay. How can you explain the theories and the theme and the concepts before even like uh, writing, the, writing the genre of and writing about it and writing the genre first? You plan to write your rationale and you write your own. But can you do the other way around? Can you do it? Well, no, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do it entirely. Yeah. I wouldn't do it entirely the other way around. But. Of course, keep in mind, yeah. You can modify a rationale once you're done with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So write the rationale. Do all the planning that you need for your rationale. Write the rationale. Write the text, the actual text, and then go back and revise your rationale to make it better. It's on the exam. Go back and rewrite things a thousand times if you want to. Yeah. Okay. We need the aspect of the course. We need the context audience, the purpose audience. Somebody make a note of these things. Um, we need, what's the third thing that we need? Don't Good. So I would put genre before concepts for the reason. I don't mind majority of the I'm not, I'm not, good, good point to make. I'm not saying that you need to put them in this order. This isn't like a, like a, a rule book for the, for the structure. Just make sure that these things are incorporated. And then the fourth thing, once you know what your text type is, what else do you need to make sure that you
Um, so, you so remember, you're, you're showing you're understanding two things. You're showing you understand that part of the course, and you're showing you understand that type of type. If you say, I'm going to write a blog, and then you write an essay instead, which is a common problem with students saying they're going to write a blog, apparently. Um, if you're not following the conventions of that text type, you're not showing that you understand how that text type works. Okay, so these are the four things that need to be included in your rationale, and it's 928. Um, I, um, in, our, in Monday's lesson, we're going to have that maybe 10 minutes at the beginning to hear some examples of your context paragraphs. And then we're going to look at some examples of written tasks that did well last year. Um, so I put those in a folder. There's a folder called written tasks. <clears throat> There's a subfolder in that called exemplars. And then I put some, some example texts in there. One of them got 15 marks a couple years ago because it's just as useful to see one that wasn't as successful. 15 marks is a, is a respectable grade six. I know you guys are always shooting for the grade seven, but I want to encourage you to shoot for the grade seven. But it's useful to see what a, what a, what a, a, a good solid written task looks like. And then we can always use that one to consider what could that student have done differently to make it more effective. The other, and it's, and it's named as a 15 mark essay, a 15 mark written task. The others are all either 18 or 19 marks. And some of them are relevant to part two. Only one of them is relevant to part two. The others are relevant to other parts of the course. But it's still useful for you to have an overview to see the different types of texts that you might write. So if you want to have a look at those over the weekend, you're welcome to, but I'm not going to expect you to. And we'll look at those on Monday to start sort of applying our understanding of, okay, we know theoretically what the written task is supposed to be about. Let's see what, what it actually looks like in practice. Um, so in our last minute before the bell goes, let's just take a moment to consolidate that the bell just run. Okay. Um, so I'm going to call on three people, and I want you to tell me in six words or less something that you understand about the written task. You ready? Okay. Tanya. It's about reaches where we talk to the and we go and we the and we connect with the and we go to the and we Okay. Good. Give me a number between one and ten, please. Um, five. One, two, three, four, five. Five or something? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I need it in six words or less. Give me a number between one and ten. Three. One, two, three. Uh, Nice rational links to aspects of notes. Right. Okay. The links. Um, I'm going to speak in the weekend. 